tell me when you're up now. My name's Melinda Maxwell. I'm from England. Um, I'm a professional oboist. Um, I was a pianist from the age of eight, and then at the age of 14, I heard the oboe. I think it was a Mahler symphony. Uh, my family are not musicians, they're all architects, but music was always around and on radio or, or record player. Anyway, I heard a sound and I thought to myself, my God, that's the most beautiful sound, I want to learn it. And it was the oboe. And the journey began. And now I'm in the evening of my life, if you like, I'm in my mid sixties and the aulos, this beautiful instrument has now appeared in my life for real. I've always thought about this instrument because I've seen drawings of it on Greek vases and I've always been curious. Now, how can they play with two double reeds, let alone one? And what on earth did it sound like? So now in this wonderful course in Tarquinia with EMAP, um, I've discovered something about the Aulos, which is that this instrument is extremely sophisticated and it has the most beautiful sound and we're very much at the early stages of finding out how they played them and what they played on them. What we do know from texts and from history is that these instruments were extremely popular and there were two types of music. There were the pains, which were the, um, if you like, the, the, the religious noble, dignified music of the Aulos, and then there were the Dithyrams, which were the the partying, the revelry of the Aulos, and it has two characters. Um, I'm very, very, very much at the early stages of learning to play this instrument, and one of the difficult things, I mean, there are many types of Aulos, this is just a copy of one that is in the Louvre, that I think they found in the late 60s. Um, it has a very wide stretch in the lower pipe where I have to get my forefinger and second finger very stretched and it, it actually physically hurts, it hurts. So I have to decide that I'm going to do this every day just for a little bit to get the muscles in the right place. That's step one. This pipe is fine. I can place my, my, my fingers there and it sort of goes. Of course this is completely not how you play the oboe because on the oboe we have to curve our fingers and use this part of the finger. We have a lot of control that way but here we flatten. So we lift and also we hold the instrument like this but with using the thumb as well. So there's an awful lot to learn about this instrument. What I do know is that the polyphony between this one and this one is fascinating because they are a fourth apart and the fourth is an interval that is a very interesting one because it opens up all sorts of harmonic possibilities and that's where I'm very interested because this is going into my PhD research because I want to unlock the oboe because I believe the oboe has this sound in it it hasn't gone this is a very distant great 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 grandmother grandfather of the oboe and it's part of its history and I'm absolutely totally excited about what I'm going to find thank you very much